but I do believe that what we're on the cusp of is um, a potential, a po possible, vast change in human consciousness. Um, and that's what we're going to need in order for humanity to survive. Because if we carry on this way, it, it, it's not going to... Humanity, the planet will go on quite happily, but humanity will not survive. And so we have to make what, what Einstein was referring to when he said, you can't solve a problem from the consciousness that created it. So it's our job to up our level, not just a little bit, but a huge amount, to up our level of consciousness. And that's beginning to dawn, but we've still got some extremely sleepy people around. Um, we've got some clowns, we've got some, you know, archaic thinkers around, and that's normal. Um, but all we can, all, all those of us who are beginning to be alert to this can do is um, do our best to share what we know, to share our experience, to, to share it more and more at levels where it matters. Um, and that includes the armed forces who are now very, very alert to this. I'm very um, inspired by what's going on in some parts of the British Army training where they're actually using Gandhi as, you know, his, as a, not as a model so much as using his scripts as teaching materials. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, great things are happening. Um, there's a wonderful um, book being produced called Understand to Prevent by the armies of six nations, and our nation is one of them. Um, and so th there's, there's lots going on, but uh, if you look at the daily news, you wouldn't think so, um, because as you rightly pointed out, Tom, the, the media um, lead with what bleeds. If it bleeds, it leads. And they're not so interested in telling stories of people like Chris Hughes or even the daily incredible work that's going on at grassroots level in the Congo, in Zimbabwe, in Pakistan, where huge, huge um, changes are being brought about by local people using their own courage, unnoticed and often unencouraged. So that's what Peace Direct does is to provide them with uh, media coverage, um, with capacity building and with small amounts of money to help them do what they do. Um, and these are, these are the unarmed heroes of our time. Well, I must say, um, what Greta Thunberg is doing really, really excites me. Um, it, it really does. And uh, I, I love her rebelliousness and her, her, her stance, challenge. Her uncompromising uh, truth. It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and just it's such a, a graphic demonstration where... Uh, you, you get people just saying, well, she should be in school. Uh, and it's like, wake up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> support all the British kids who are copying her now. I mean, it's great. Rather than saying they should be in school, no. They should be calling their leaders to account. Mm. That's what leadership is about. It's about participation. And to tell them they should shut up and go back to school is ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous, and it's the it's the wrong direction. We should be encouraging our young people to uphold the standards that our leaders profess but don't act on. For the most, <clears throat> I would um, quite like to bring in the feminine now, because in some respects, I think you can talk about these qualities and these attributes of a new leadership without attributing them to the feminine, like listening and understanding and compassion and intuition. But sometimes I think it's helpful to be explicit about things in, in the, the hope that they solidify the understanding or make some sense on a feeling level. But it, I know that it doesn't resonate with everyone. So I just wanted to put that out there first. But I suppose for us and for me, 
these qualities are they do come from the feminine they need to be very much supported by the masculine by you know that confidence and strength that we can draw on from our masculine but there are some that would say that we're out of balance in the world because we've been repressing the feminine so it's looking at our own kind of inner feminine and masculine but then within the cultural narrative of of how we view the feminine and so very often when you even bring up the feminine it's like oh but that's weak or it's see, perceived as negative so how do you feel about that in your work do you are you explicit about talking about those qualities of leadership as feminine i mean i know that you have started your rising women rising world project so this is something that weaves through your work as well but could you just tell us a little bit more about it from your perspective mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I agree with every word you've just said, um, because I think it's um, a vital change that we're going through. Um, I, I like to get away from genderizing it. And so what we do is, is we call it feminine intelligence, mm. as Tom knows, available equally to men as it is to women. So it's not something that women are better at than men. Women are probably more trained to do some aspects of it, but men are just as good at those qualities you've enumerated um, when, they, when they put, you know, when they put their hearts and minds into it. And so um, feminine intelligence, we call it FQ, as in IQ, EQ, FQ. And it's that intelligence that will um, make our world safer if it can be adopted and not seen as weak and um, uh, manipulable. Uh, so it needs to be accompanied by a lot of wisdom. Wisdom is the, the one that you left out and I think it's key, that intelligence. So it's not simplistic, it's not naive, it's based on the, um, the ancient, divine feminine wisdom that inspired the, the ancient goddesses before before we invented male gods um, you know the divine feminine was in place from 22,000 BC right through to about 5,000 BC that the because women were seen to be magical because they could give birth and the male participation in um, in, in creating a new human being wasn't really realized until quite late. The first sculptures that show that only appeared about, I think, 13, 12,000 BC. And so for thousands of years, women were considered to be the, um, the, the, the arch, the, the, the great power because they could do this magical thing, give birth to a new human being, which is what the human race obviously needed. And so um, during that time, um, the, the sculptures and the statues, and in some cases, the writings that survived later on, um, and particularly in great women sages like Julian of Norwich and so on, um, that wisdom has, permeated and is now being retrieved by many many women and men scholars and the greatest of these at the moment actually is is british she's 86 now and she's written fantastic books about the divine feminine and bearing and all based on historical and archaeological finds so um that that ingredient of wisdom which as we all know is is not easy to acquire it's hard earned we have to constantly be learning our whole life is a wonderful unfolding of learning opportunity that will be presented to us when we're ready for them um, and from which we can then learn. and so you know, the biggest challenges that come our way and we go, oh, no, 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 I can't deal with that. If we can actually walk towards what we fear, walk towards what we fear in all respects, whether it's, whether it's verbal violence or whatever it is, if we can walk towards it, especially our own inner violence, you know, the 
the violence we do to ourselves. If we can walk towards that and by facing it, transform it, then I think we're on the path of um, benefiting from all those life opportunities that we're given. Although at first we want to go, oh, no, no, not another one. I've got a lovely expression in, in the book that I wrote, I think it was ages ago, I wrote a book called Power and, Se Power and Sex, and in it I describe an AFCO. Do you know what an AFCO is? No. Another effing growth opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they say that the universe keeps on you the same lesson until you learn it. So. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that's that's my so I I don't think that feminine intelligence is a nice to have thing or even a um, even a sort of um, really or uh, feminine in the normal sense what things you have I think it's really tough, tough to learn and it's very tough.